Today I'm going to get rid of this old Starlink. So I'm going to replace our old Generation 1 Starlink dish with a new Generation 3 Starlink dish. Why am I going to do that? Because our old Starlink router decided it wanted to be a paperweight instead of a router. Why am I replacing the dish if all that was wrong was a bad router? Because Starlink sent me a new dish and router even though I only needed a new router. Is the new Gen 3 Starlink going to outperform my Generation 1 Starlink? Probably not, but we're going to do it anyway. Here's the stuff we're going to use. A Generation 3 Starlink dish. A Generation 3 Starlink router. A Generation 3 Starlink power pack. A really long cable. A Generation 3 pull mount kit. Starlink pull mount kit wire clips. A drill. A long drill bit. An impact driver. A ladder. You're also going to need an Allen wrench. I, I forgot to do the thing. Well, the problem I got is the uh, the wire supplied with the Generation 1 Starlink is much longer than the wire they supplied with the uh, Generation 3. <sighs> I guess I'm going to have to move my uh, custom mount. Well, the forecast said 0% chance of rain today. And it's raining. <laughs> So, uh, you know, I, th I think we can th say things are going as normally expected. I do have a concern with this pole mount. It doesn't seem as robust 
as the Gen 1 pull mount. The Gen 1 pull mount had a bunch of set screws. This one has two. So we'll see how it holds up in the wind out here because it gets extremely windy. I'll just lay that right there. All right, we're going to take down the custom pole and move it here. That should be fun. It's always something. Oh, I forgot you up there and I moved the ladder. Gotcha. I have a minor, I don't know if I'd call it a fear of ladders, but a strong aversion. And here I am, going up and down ladders all day. Screws are a little too long, but I'm not going to climb back down this ladder again. I might have to climb back down this ladder again. Okay. Easy does it, fellas. It's, it's not going well, if you're wondering. Thankfully, in my other pocket, I have screws that are even longer than the ones that are too long. I'm not real sure on the angle for this thing. <clears throat> the old one moved. This one's just stationary. So I'm trying to approximate the approximate angle I had it at. I'm sure once we get it plugged in, it'll tell me if it doesn't have a good enough view of the sky. Did I mention how much I hate working on ladders? Oh, there, big fella.
I've always got to remind myself in situations like this that everything on YouTube is made up. It's all fake, you know, so you know, none of this is happening. Oh, I'm in my happy place. Well, what do you think the neighbors are up to? Nothing much, looks like. Well, back to work. I've got to adjust this thing six degrees and it makes noises. Okay, so it takes about about a uh, 15 or so minutes for this thing to hook up to all the satellites. There's a little blinky light on the front of the uh, the machine that tells you it's trying to hook up. It had me a little worried because it didn't hook up at first, but it did eventually hook up. Um, so initial thoughts really stinks that that cord for this thing was shorter. Um, I don't like that it doesn't self-position itself. I had to position it. Um, and positioning it, you know, when it's up there and you're down here, it's kind of a bear. You know, it'd be really stink if this thing was on like the peak of the roof or something and it was raining. Uh, but, you know, not terrible. You know, just had to move it a little bit and had to twist it around to get it, get it centered where it needs to be. Um, I did an initial speed test. Speed is no different than it was with the Gen 1. So did I just waste all my time replacing the Generation 1 with the Generation 3? I don't know. I've heard some things about how the technology is different in this Gen 3. Um, it might be, might be way better. Um, so I'm going to give it about a week and then do another speed test after it does a bunch, bunch of machine learning and beep booping and all the stuff that technology does and then retest and then we'll do a real talk about speed. I will say this this Irwin speed bore, this long bit here, this is the best bit I've ever used for drilling through joists or through subfloors or whatever. I had to put a hole through the floor to route some of these wires. Um, these things are sweet. There's a little hole for running a, a line on it so you can kind of drill your hole all the way through, connect your line and then pull it out. That's kind of neat to pull a line through. And then having this pointy little tip on here makes starting a hole easy, even if you're not exactly centered. So I really love this thing. I'll, I'll put a link to this in the description. This is really neat for doing installs like this. Okay, so I should be coming back with a one week update in a moment here. Okay, we're out here a week later. 
how did everything go? Um, what I'll do is I'll put on one side of the screen just a the the uh, speed test I did with the the old Starlink uh, when I before I installed this, and on the other side of the screen I'll do the the new Starlink, and you can see um, I didn't notice a huge difference. Um, after a week, you know everything's stabilized. You know something that's kind of screwy is uh, you know because the uh, the Ethernet cable going to this dish was shorter than the old one. I had to mount this dish closer to the house, which means the dish is kind of under the eave of our house. So maybe you can see this. It's kind of pointed partially at the the uh, the eaves of the house, and it is partially obstructed when I first installed it, I kind of panicked because I ran my first speed test and it says, hey, your thing's obstructed. Um, this is going to cause slowdowns and stuff. As it turns out, it doesn't need that part of the sky. It says it won't reduce our speed, but I might see if I can move it a couple feet forward. I have like maybe a foot, maybe two feet of cable, and that would make a difference in that obstruction. It is kind of cool that their obstruction maps 3D so you can really see where you're having your problems. So I don't notice any huge speed difference, um, but you know maybe we are getting better performance and I just don't know. It's not like I'm some kind of power user or something. Uh, my dad was playing some video games. He says, yeah, this thing, uh, it's going faster. So, okay, okay, that sounds good. But for the evidence I saw from running sprinting speed tests, didn't see a big difference. So. Was it worth it to install this new Generation 3 Dishy? Um, honestly, if I would have had to pay for it, no. Um, I don't think so, because the old dish would track and move itself, you know, to position correctly. This thing you have to manually, manually position, and if I get a big windstorm and it kind of blows it askew a little bit, well, that's my problem. I got to climb up there and fix it. I can only imagine if this thing was on a huge mast, what a pain in the neck that would be. So you definitely want one of the dishes that will self-angle or track itself. And uh, maybe I will find the speed's better. I don't. I don't know. I just. I don't notice an appreciable difference. Uh, but you know, time will tell. So I guess we'll do another update, maybe six months or a year down the line, and 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 see what I'm thinking. All right, uh, next project is I'm going to uh, beam this Starlink satellite service to the barn. Now you might, if you've watched the other video, which some people have, I already had done that. Well, I'm gonna try to do it the right way. I'm gonna use a, a bridge or maybe a Wi-Fi extender to get signal out to the barn and out to the greenhouse and out to the woods. So that should actually be a, kind of a fun thing. That's what I'm recording right now, uh, but That'll be in a different video. So that should be the next video up if you subscribe or are subscribed. That's what you'll see next. Okay, uh, that's it. We'll see y'all later.